are with Ring of Honor now, but you had another tenure with Ring of Honor. And during that time period, there was the one of the greatest feuds on the Indies. It was ROH versus CZW. Take us behind the locker room. Take us to the booking meetings. How did that whole thing play out? Was there any heat between the boys? Was John Zandig the douche I always read that he is? Come on, tell us about that feud. The internet wants to know. <laughs> <laughs> well... I wasn't in on any of the booking meetings. Uh, at the time, Gabe Sapolsky was the booker in Ring of Honor. And he said, well, we're thinking about doing this thing. And basically, I, I mean, I almost feel like I'm, you know, it, my God, everybody, you can't expose the wrestling business anymore. But there was such a great passion and emotion in the Ring of Honor and Combat Zone wrestling thing that I almost feel like I'm, you know, telling kids there was no Santa Claus, say there wasn't really any unprofessional conduct. Um, but at the same time, there was a lot of shooting going on. Because I think that's why it got over, because the fans, remember what I said, Jerry Jared always said, you know, when he, when he had Lawler and Dundee, <laughs> we're going to program with each other, the fans knew Jerry Lawler and Bill Dundee didn't like each other, because they told the fans, whether they were partners, both baby faces, one of them was a heel, fight each other, whatever, they told the fans at the, at the arena, they told the fans at the convenience store after the matches, you know, they didn't like each other, and Jarrett used that, and they sold out year after year when he put them against each other uh, because the fans knew there was an element there. They were going to beat the piss out of each other. I think hardcore wrestling is, is the most ridiculous, fucking inane, stupid thing that I've ever seen in my life. And, and I talked about ECW. You know, they only scratched the surface, this combat zone wrestling bullshit, the broken light tubes, the fluorescent light tubes, the fucking barbed wire, the staple gun, the, I mean, just anything about it. I think it's fucking ridiculous. I think anybody that perpetrates it has to have their head examined. I think anybody that promotes it ought to be put in fucking jail. Uh, that Ian Rotten in the state of Kentucky. Now, in the state of Kentucky used to have one of the easiest athletic commissions in the world to get along with. $5 license and fucking have a promoter's license, they wouldn't even send an inspector. Because of Ian Rotten and his hardcore wrestling, getting on the news, people being splattered with blood, guy almost bled to death because he got punctured by a fucking fluorescent light tube, was taken to the hospital, hardcore wrestling invades state. All of a sudden now there's inspectors and there's rules and regulations. You can't have any blood, any, even accidental blood. Match must end immediately. You'll lose your promoter's license. The licenses cost a fortune more. We immuned the people to simple angles that they could fucking believe that a guy could work and you could still believe he was hurt. There, it doesn't take any talent to take blunt instruments and bash each other over the fucking head for real in front of 200 people at a goddamn parking lot of a fucking bowling alley for $20 if you get paid at all. It made the fucking business look bad. It made the boys... When I saw the wrestler, I went into a three-day depression. <laughs> because here are people who may not know anything about professional wrestling for the last 20 years since Hulk Hogan and Hulkamania or I remember Ric Flair or whatever, and now they're thinking, oh my God, that's what happened to all those guys. And now professional wrestling is in a goddamn fucking VFW hall and all the people. I don't even take independent bookings. Because I'm afraid if I go to a fucking show that there's only 200 people at, and I've got my gimmick table out, people look at me and say, oh, now he needs the money too. Fuck, it's fucking embarrassing. It's embarrassing that... that the average person would say, oh, he would hear that somebody's being stapled with a fucking staple gun or ripped up with broken glass or doing this fucking foolishness. It takes no talent. It takes no art. The people that fucking go and pay to see it, I have serious doubts about their fucking mental capacity that you would think that's fucking entertainment, which taxes the very definition of the word. And the whole thing is fucking ridiculous. And it's, what if you were a basketball fan and all your life you loved basketball? You got a tickle out of the Harlem Globetrotters, but I mean, at least it was still a fucking athletic fucking show. But mostly you like the Boston Celtics or the goddamn whatever the fuck. And all of a sudden they come up with new rules for basketball. Like I'm sure Vince Russo would like to write. Where you've got to make the inbounds pass through a, across a flaming table. And if you've got to shoot a free throw, you got to shoot it over a fucking three coils of barbed wire. And there's a guy on the fucking top of the goddamn basket that's going to fucking try to spear the ball and puncture it and throw a spear at you and whatever the fuck. People, what the fuck is this? Why would anybody want to be involved in this? Why the fuck would anybody want to be involved in a situation where they're going to be ripped up with barbed wire, bashed with fucking light tubes, cut with broken glass, 
snapped with mouse traps, and hit with a fucking staple gun. I made fifteen thousand dollars for fucking WrestleMania. I took one bump, and it was a shitty one because Luger threw a shitty punch. I made ten thousand dollars for jumping off that fucking scaffold, and regretted that. <laughs> And somebody's going to do that shit to themselves for $20 because, like Ian Rotten, they have some kind of inordinate need to be somebody in front of a few fucking deluded, fucking delinquent fucking people at a goddamn bowling alley in fucking West Fuckwad, Indiana. It just makes everybody in our business look like fucking morons. And that's what I conveyed in the Ring of Honor fucking CZW angle and meant every fucking word of it, and people loved it because they bought it because they knew it was real. Very good, Zach. But everybody involved was professional, even though Zandy couldn't say Sue if the hogs had him. I blistered him on the fucking uh, mm -hmm. promo, but how can, he, how can you defend the indefensible?